Um, as, as Chris said, I'm, I'm a designer by training. I'm, I'm an industrial designer, uh, grew up designing products and making things. And, um, and, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the, the aspect of making things uh, a little later. And I'm, I'm also going to, by the end of this, I'm hopeful in changing maybe a little bit about the way you all think about what you do. So that's, that's my, my goal. Um, and I'm going to start by talking about what the problem is. Um, the issue in the world today is that there are all of these things going on. Air pollution, global warming, hazardous waste, ozone depletion, water pollution, overpopulation, poverty, rainforest destruction, and on, and on, and on, and on. Issues that are large scale and are generally probably not solved by an individual. But the, the way I believe uh, the activity has to happen is that we have to each take on responsibility for doing something about some part of this. So the problem is, from my perspective, as a designer, I'm, in a, I'm a designer of objects and stuff. My company makes products. And is there anybody in the room who doesn't have an output that is a product of some sort or another? Maybe some of the public sector folks, but almost everybody else makes stuff. You either make buildings, you make products, you make things. And the reality is that's where most of it ends up ultimately, in some kind of landfill or dump somewhere. And so as a, as a hippie in the 1970s, uh, when I was growing up and being taught design education in a world where the whole earth catalog and the kind of logic of becoming uh, more sensitive of, to our planet and our uh, 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 surroundings, that kind of didn't match with this, okay, today we're going to teach you how to mass produce things with polyvinyl chloride. You know, the things that you're made, where you're making products out of uh, stuff. So my, I've spent most of my career as a designer trying to figure that equation out and how to do a better job of that, um, that making of things and worrying about where they end up in the, in the planet. So the company, Johnson & Johnson, is a Fortune 500 uh, corporation. In fact, it's a Fortune 100 corporation that does three kinds of businesses. We make pharmaceuticals where we are um, inventing drugs to take care of people. Uh, we make medical devices where we uh, develop things like artificial hips that allow people to have mobility and change their, their lives. We, have, uh, we also make things that are uh, like stents for heart uh, work. And the third part of our business is consumer, uh, where we make consumer products. Uh, Johnson's Baby is probably the most famous worldwide. You all um, may know Natusan, which is a Johnson & Johnson product. We have over 250 uh, brands around the world, uh, and they are of every character and type within uh, healthcare, uh, beauty, and skin care, uh, as well as things like oral health and uh, uh, devices for, uh, for, again, for, for taking care of skin. Um, our uh, kind of slogan, if you will, is bringing science to the art of healthy living. J&J &J is a company based in science. We have a huge amount of R&D work, uh, and the R&D uh, community within J&J &J is actually quite uh, sophisticated and uh, thoughtful about the way they think about what they do. About five years ago, though, the company went through a process and made a decision to add design to the equation because design thinking, much in the logic of, uh, of Christian uh, before me, design thinking brings something to the layer of discussion that isn't in every R&D conversation. What they were not so great at uh, until recently was thinking about the product side of, of what we do. And we brought in uh, 50 people in my team to begin to think about that. And as was said before, people are, make the difference here. So bringing in designers, engineers, 
um, strategists, uh, researchers, ethno ethnographers, and other kinds of people to do this work uh, was a, a kind of powerful change in the way J&J thought about product uh, development and, and uh, approaching the way we do things. j and is headquartered in a place called New Brunswick, New Jersey, which if, has anybody heard of New Brunswick, New Jersey? Yeah, a couple of you. Uh, it's, it's a nice little town. Rutgers University is there. It's, it's in the middle of New Jersey. It is not exactly the um, uh, center of the universe when it comes to design thinking. So uh, we made a decision actually very consciously to build the design center in New York City. This is uh, the sort of front door of the place. It's um, in a great building, old industrial building with lots of light. We built it from, from uh, uh, sustainable materials. We tried to use as little as possible. It's a very comfortable uh, environment for people to work in. We have what we call the big table. And basically everybody in the design studio works at one big table. And our idea is that we don't have um, team group. You know, many, many people want teams to work in groups. I don't. What I'm interested in actually is that all 80 people in my team are interacting on a daily basis. Um, quick set of rules. We have guiding principles about how we design for sustainability. Yeah, we have to be authentic to who we are as a company. So we, based on that credo I showed you before, we need to make sure that when we're thinking about things, we're thinking about them in a way that makes people comfortable that, that, that this is coming from Johnson & Johnson. We also must leverage our sustainability uh, to kind of create um, more value for consumers, not less. Many times people talk about sustainability as a takeaway, you know, you're going to take something away from me, not give me something. And what we want to do is build sustainability in as part of the value of the product, making sure that people get what, what, uh, what they're paying for. We also have to share responsibility to get the big job of sustainability done. Sustainability can't just be me talking about it in front of um, uh, the big company. It's got to be a large, broadly based idea within the company that everybody from the marketing person to the engineer to the R&D person uh, to the uh, designer all agree on and, and think is the right thing to do. And then last but not least, we have to create shared value for sustainability to be sustainable. What that means is every time we design a product that has sustainability built into it, it has to sell because our corporation is a profit for-profit corporation, we, as much as I'd like us to do absolutely everything from a sustainability point of view that we can, we have to sometimes make trade-offs that make the value work. And we can talk about that more later, because that's a little bit of a, um, that sometimes feels like a compromise in the process, but actually if every company did this, we'd have a more sustainable uh, business uh, world. The um, strategies that we use are uh, these. Education and awareness is about teaching everybody we touch, and that's one of the things I'm doing here today is talking to you about it. Uh, but we do this internally as well. We um, talk about weight reduction, and I'm not talking about me losing five pounds, which I need to do, or maybe even 10. Uh, but weight reduction in the con context of what we make. So we actually consciously talk about weight reduction being a key sustainability driver, because if we make things out of less stuff, we are more sustainable than we would have been otherwise. Pretty simple. The challenges for this, as anybody in a company will tell you, are that these kinds of things happen. The inertia uh, of changing anything is a driver of all things. So I'm sure Christian would say that you know, in government, having those conversations with somebody in the ministry of, of whatever, you know, they've done it this way for a thousand years, we're gonna do it this way for the next thousand years, get over it, we're not changing. Change is really hard. And getting inside a company when you've made um, a single product a single way for a long time, to have somebody do something different is very difficult. Second one is that there is a perceived higher cost about sustainability. The reality of that is not quite so, um, black and white. 
uh, and I'm going to show you a couple of cases. And in fact, the logic for m showing that sustainability can actually save money is one way of getting corporations to actually think about it. Um, in the United States, we have this giant retailer called Walmart, who is the world's largest retailer. They make billions of dollars worth of stuff, uh, sell billions of dollars worth of stuff. And they've recently, in the last five years, begun to talk about sustainability. Um, and I'm really happy that they talk about sustainability. But the real thing that they're talking about is saving money. So they're working on sustainability from a money-saving point of view. And you know what? That's OK. If we're working on sustainability, and it happens to be the big giant retailer on 40,000 pound gorilla, and they're saving money by using less stuff and doing things differently, I'm OK with that. We make bl blood glucose meters. How many of you know somebody with diabetes? Diabetes is a tough, tough disease because what it, it's a, it's a never-ending process. Do, doesn't go away, can't get better from it, have to ma monitor it all the time. And monitoring for it feels like you've done something bad. So most people who have diabetes have, have gotten it um, type 2 in particular, have gotten it as, uh, as older adults, and they've gotten it usually because they've not been very good about monitoring their health or taking care of their weight or their food intake. And it's hard to convert people who are doing that and have been that way for their whole lives to doing something different. So the doctor prescribed, you know, who says you have diabetes, basically is telling you you have diabetes and you're going to be stuck with it for the rest of your life. And usually they're not very sympathetic because they're just not doctors in that kind of situation. And I'm being really, I, I hope none, nobody is a really sensitive doctor here. But the, the idea of how, di how diabetes gets treated in, in uh, the world today is really one of illness instead of how can I get better. So what we're working on is how can I get better? And one of the things we're doing is making a diabetes meter that uh, through a chip connects to an Apple uh, iPhone. And when you take your reading, it automatically sends it to your iPhone. And your iPhone lights up and says, you ought to be having an Apple. Or you, should, you need to do this. Or why don't you think about walking down the street for a month? You know, it, it's providing support and intelligence about what you need to know. Because most people who take their blood sugar, when they read the reading, they sort of know what the reading means, but they have no idea beyond that because nobody's training them. So what this is is a training device for that uh, process. Based in science, and then you certainly uh, at one point applied design thinking. What, what was the change in, in management? Why, why did this change happen? What changed was that every year the uh, senior management team of the consumer products group would get together and do the strategy for the next five years. So kind of an ongoing strategy process of what was working and what wasn't working. And they would do an assessment of what they were good at and what they weren't good at. And every year for about eight years, they were really good at R&D. They were really good at marketing. They were really good at, the, at kind of talking to uh, the sales side of the businesses. But they were being told they were really bad at design. Target, which is a major retailer in the United States that is all about design, um, came to the woman who was the chairman at the time, who was the person who hired me, and said to her, if you don't start making your products better, more well designed, we're going to stop carrying your products. And that sort of, you know, the light bulb finally went off and they said, oh, we, we better start thinking of this as, a, as an activity that we need to encourage. 